The format of this meeting is a 10-minute speaker, the 10-minute coffee break, and then a main speaker. Tonight, our first speaker is Linda. Please allow, uh, Linda, right? Yeah. Oh, look at me. Let's give Linda a big hand. Hi, everybody. I'm Linda. I'm an alcoholic. <sighs> wow. Okay, I'm going to try to watch the clock. I'm very OCD, so I want to stop right on time. Um, well, there's not a whole lot. I, I, I can't wrap everything up in 10 minutes, so I'm going to do the best I can um, with what I have chosen, and, um, and that's what happened to me two and a half years ago. Um, two and a half years ago, I had um, yet another relapse, and um, I've been in and out of this program for, oh my gosh, probably 20-something years, and um, so I've had a few relapses, um, but I kept coming back, and two and a half years ago, um, as they describe in the book, and, and as they tell you, um, this disease progresses, and it gets worse, and um, through those years, um, mine had progressed quite a bit, a lot more than I thought, because I always thought that it was going to be different. I always thought that I could handle it. You know, this time I can handle it. And um, so that the last time when I went out, um, it started out like it usually does. I drank a little bit. Um, I was okay. Didn't have to drink for a little while. Drink a little bit again. Um, within a very short amount of time, I found myself right back to where I had been. And um, they, they say you pick up where you left off, and, and I definitely, that and more. Um, I never was a morning drinker. Um, I just never drank in the morning, you know. It didn't appeal to me. Um, this time around, I, I found myself um, first thing in the morning, I, I needed a drink. And, um, you know, I... I I knew, I knew that, I knew it was bad, but it didn't matter. Alcohol had taken me over once again, and um, so there I was, sometimes puking before I could get a beer down, and then I would finish drinking, um, and then I would continue my day. You know, um, halfway through the day, I would uh, get tired, lay down for a while, get back up, do it again. We know the scenario. Um, so I continued on. I did that, did that, ran, ran, um, always running. Um, I found myself uh, one evening in my kitchen and um, in that despair that they talk about. And um, I didn't want to, I couldn't get drunk anymore. I could not get drunk anymore. I didn't get what I needed to get. Um, I was sick, I was hopeless, I was tired, um, I didn't want to be here, and I didn't know how to get back here. And so I, uh, I took a knife out of my, um, out of my knife holder, and, and I sharpened it, and um, I just wanted to die, you know. Um, I didn't know what, I, I, I didn't know any other answer. I couldn't mentally come up with any other answer at that point. I didn't want to, I knew, I, I, I just knew I couldn't keep going on the way that I was going on. So at that moment, the answer for me was just to die. I was already dead anyway. So I, att I started to attempt to do that, and um, by the grace of God, my husband walked in, and, um, and he stopped me. Um, he, he then took me to um, my mother-in-law's house where some people from the program um, came over and um, they took me to a facility. Uh, that facility took me in and, um, and took care of me for, I, I believe, seven days, whatever, and told me that I needed to follow up with another program. And um, at, that, at that time, I finally knew that I had to do something different. 
Um, I knew I could come back to the program. I knew I could come back to these rooms. But right at that point, I knew that wasn't going to work. I needed more. I needed more help. So they ended up sending me to a facility um, clear the hell away, and that was in Arizona City, um, a place out in the middle of nowhere where I could not leave. <laughs> I had nowhere to go if I left. And God knew that's what I needed. God, God knew he had this whole plan, and um, I had never even heard of the place. I never even heard of Arizona City, for God's sakes. So um, I ended up in that facility, and and I went in there, and um, I was so broken. I was so hopeless. I had no hope, no hope at all when I walked in those doors. I just knew I needed to be away. And um, I didn't know if I'd last. The, I, when I walked in there, I said, I'm here for your 28-day 28, for your 28 day program. She said, we don't have a 28-day program. It's 30 days. I said, well, I guess I'll stay 30 days. And um, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to make it the 30 days, but I knew for that moment that's where I needed to be. So I continued on. I did what they asked. Um, it was a very strict program. It was a good program. Everything was done in, in facility, which that's what I needed because if I got outside, you know, and start going to meetings, um, I get in trouble, you know. I, I, I just do. So, again, God knew where I needed to be. Um, I did what was told and what was asked for me to do there. Um, we had to do things different. Um, I, I, I had to do steps in front of people. I had to, I, I had to do things that I didn't really want to do in front of people. I didn't want everybody knowing things about me. But in order for me to get what I needed, I was told I had to do it. And um, so I did those things. And day by day, um, I started feeling better. I, I found a God while I was in that facility. Um, I never really had a God. I thought I had a God. But um, I totally surrendered. It was totally, it, it was different. Um, my spirituality came back in a way that I had never had it before. Um, I was just, I, I, I felt like there was finally some hope, you know, and um, I continued out. As time went on, um, it got a little harder to stay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of young girls there, and and I'm not real young, and you know, my my thing to them was, you know, you don't want to be my age sitting in a place like this. That's the last freaking place I wanted to be. And um, and I thought to myself, you know, I don't ever have to be here again. I don't ever have to come back here again. So I, I took the treatment. Um, I, I got some other help that I, I, I really needed over some trauma that had happened to me, and that's a whole other story. Did that... Um, that helped me tremendously. Um, did the steps thoroughly with the sponsor and with the staff. Um, I did every single thing I was asked to do. And you know, I walked out of there with a diploma. And for me, that is something because I don't complete stuff. I just don't. And when I came out of there, I was scared shitless. But I just continue to do every day what I did there. You know, I pray. I hit my knees and I pray to my God. I, I, I use the tools that I was taught. You know, I have a sponsor. I do contact my sponsor. I use my sponsor. Um, I help other alcoholics. I do things like this that are asked of me. You know, um, I, I don't always want to do these things. But I was told these things keep me sober. And today that's what I want. I want. I walked out of there with hope and sobriety, and that's what I want to keep. Thank you, guys.